Chapter 7. Summoned to see the elders. 28th of the 2nd, 1999. Today was the day I was summoned to see the elders regarding my objections to them supporting women becoming elders. On the 21st of February, I was asked to meet the elders after the morning meeting. I met with the elders as agreed and we met in a small room. The elders were five elders, one being the secretary. I was informed by the secretary that they had not called me to discuss any issue with me about women elders, but rather, as what had happened was so very serious, he wondered had I got any idea how serious it was. He stated, I had written to a visiting preacher from the Bible College, and I was very rude to him. This was out of order, as I was undermining the eldership of the church. His tone of voice and method of speech was such that he might well have said, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? 1 Kings 18 verse 17. I replied I was sorry if I had caused an offence, but I had not meant to. However, before I could say any more, I was silenced by the secretary's retort. He said, No, no, it's nothing to do with an offence. I said, well, I couldn't say any more, as I did not know what to say. I was told by the secretary that I was out of order, and how could I explain my writing to such letters, not only to a visited preacher, but also to the elders? In trying to explain, I started to say, I was invited to become a member of the church, and I assumed, but before I could finish, I was stopped from speaking again by the secretary, him saying, no, no, not any more. That invitation to become a member has been withdrawn. I was taken back by this and had to check this out with him, first of all by saying, I did not know that, and that was news to me. He then said, as far as he was concerned, he would not support me becoming a member now, and only then added he could only speak for himself and not others. The other elders remained silent, so I assumed they were in unanimous agreement to this view. I said, well, I had not been aware of this until now and sought to explain that I was acting in good faith and in a way that I thought right. I said to the secretary that I'd asked him and the other elders before when I raised the objection at first, how did they want me to deal with this issue? At that time, the secretary had said they were the elders and I should be subject to them. I asked them to pray for me over the issue, as I knew this matter could not be left, and I wanted to act in wisdom and to honour God. I followed my objection by a letter to the elders and received a reply. The reply I received was unacceptable, as it contained very serious errors, so I wrote back, pointing them out to them. I explained in my letter that my letter to the visiting preacher was between him and me, and that I had given a copy to them as I was being open with them and not doing things in a dark corner. I had said I had no intention of arguing with them and I was not going to. The secretary said, why did I write again without saying anything new? Another elder asked me, then why all these letters if you're not arguing? I replied to the secretary and said I was not saying anything new because I was sticking to the one-point issue. Women do not qualify to be elders according to the word of God. I replied to the other elder. I wrote again by way of reply to the secretary in order to point out the errors contained in that reply to me. I simply state they were wrong and gave the reasons. I could have informed the secretary that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. That like King Saul, who was instructed to go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they had and spare them not, but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass, they too have not obeyed the commandments of God. God has instructed the church. Men are to be elders, not women. They want to go beyond the commands of God and appoint women contrary to scripture. Saul thought it was a good thing to spare the best sheep and ox and sacrifice them to the Lord. Saul did not obey the voice of the Lord, but did evil in the sight of the Lord. 1 Samuel 15, 1-23. to 
To go beyond Scripture and against Scripture is the same sin as King Saul. I was then asked if I would subject myself if a woman was appointed to join their team. I replied, it depends what they meant. I said, they were not ruling my conscience and they had no jurisdiction over my faith. I said, I would be subject to their authority in respect to things in church. I also said, I would not be saying any more to them about women elders. The secretary told me, that he had known me for five years, and as far as he could see, I had not changed in all that time. He saw no change in me, and it saddened him very much. He stated I was seriously, spiritually, in a bad way. I replied to Martin that if that was the case, then the Lord Jesus was more sadder than him. He said, I was consumed with this woman's eldership that it had taken me over. He maintained, no one writes pages the way I do on a subject like this. I replied to the secretary saying, I am not the same as him. I was different, that he was now judging my motives. I explained, it had not consumed me, as I had far more serious and pressing things in my life to deal with at that time. I thought to myself, after the event, that it was written of Jesus, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Psalm 69 verse 9, which of course is commendable. The elders recently, in normal course of events, brought up this issue. So I acted normally for me. The secretary then told me they could not help me, and they had already recommended some time ago that I go to LL Ministries for help. I asked, Were they asking me to leave? The secretary said, How could I continue going there if I held the views I held? I suggested that if they thought I was wrong in this issue, why did they wish me to leave, as surely they would want me to come to a knowledge of the truth and follow them, this being the scriptural reason for reproof? I suggested by staying they could help me. I certainly would wish them to come to a knowledge of the truth. This was why I had written to them in the first instance, and this would be my wish for their future. I went on to explain. I had been helped in the past year and blessed by God at the church. I had no intentions of going elsewhere at the moment. However, I asked them if they would support me if I looked elsewhere for another church. The other elders said they would. I said... I had no intention of going elsewhere, nor was I making any threats. I said also, had I known that they held to women being elders, I would not have sought to join them when they asked me to do so. At that time, there were six male elders, and no hint of a woman becoming elder. I said I would be looking elsewhere, but at the moment, I had nowhere else to go. I reiterated, I had acted out of love to them, in dealing with this issue. I did not want to get involved in controversy. It caused me great distress. I did not want it, but I did what I believed the Lord would have me do. I had been faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. I felt very calm. I was not surprised at their reaction. I was very disappointed, however, and felt sad at such a situation. I felt the Lord stood by me and I knew I had been faithful to the Lord in this issue. I am reminded, they that honour me, I will honour. 1 Samuel 2, verse 30. I now know how Paul felt when he wrote, No man stood by me, but all men forsook me. 2 Timothy 4, 16. End. David Clark, March 1999. Former support from the church. Over the past year, I had received a great deal of help and support from the church. During this time, there were several male elders, and there were no women elders, and I understood these men were seeking to honour the Lord in everything. The church had also decided to sever links with the trustees who were the United Reformed Church. This was because the trustees of the Walshash Church supported homosexuals becoming elders. The Warsaw Church 
did not support homosexuality. I supported them in their stand against homosexuality and encouraged them in it. In November, I had been asked if I would like to become a church member and I said I would like to. But I declined in the end due to my domestic situation. I was informed I was to consider myself one of the church and could join whenever I wanted. After this, one of the former elders announced he was leaving with his wife and also another senior elder announced he would be leaving too in May 1999. Another former elder had also left, leaving only five elders left. There had never been a mention of women being elders whilst I was there. It was at this time these remaining elders sought to appoint new elders and open up nominations for women. At my meeting with the elders, it was stated that they saw no reason why a woman should not become an elder. So, I felt it my duty to give the reasons. I had learned these things soon after I'd become a Christian and was used to establishing every point of belief from Scripture alone. And this was what surprised me. Why did these men not do so? 